Think you've got scroll tracking nailed on your website? Then let me ask you this simple question. Can you see a report within the Google Analytics interface that shows you average scroll depth per page? If the answer is no, and you'd like to, then keep watching, because I'm gonna show you two ways to do it right now. If you followed other blogs and videos on YouTube, then you've probably implemented scroll tracking using Google Tag Manager's auto events feature. GTM has the ability to detect vertical or horizontal page scrolls automatically and can be set up very quickly and easily to fire events at all the percentages you set, most often 10% or at 25, 50, 75, and 100%. Despite being easy to set up and what 99% of Google Analytics users do, there are a few drawbacks to this approach, which you may have run into. Number one, event overload. Firstly, if someone scrolls all the way down your page, you'll fire three additional events, perhaps even 10 additional events if you're set up to track every 10%. The second issue is a lack of fidelity. As an example, if your first trigger point is 25%, and someone scrolls to 24%, then you can only report on them having scrolled somewhere between zero and 25%, but not exactly where. And number three, the reporting is complicated. And this is the key one for me. It's really difficult to build a report showing average scroll depth per page, especially if you want this within GA and you want it alongside other page metrics. You have to export all the data into Google Sheets or Excel, or even run a BigQuery SQL query to get the raw data and then convert it into uh, a format you want. Now, this isn't something the average Google Analytics user within your business is gonna be able to do. In summary, even though the standard method of scroll tracking is easy to do, I'm not sure how practical it is for analysis. What we really want is average scroll depth to be its own metric in Google Analytics, just like bounce rate or page views. That way, any user can easily add it to a report they are building without having to know any of the details of the underlying tracking method. The good news is this is entirely possible, and I'm gonna show you two ways to achieve it right now. You've got your page scrolled event, which is using the inbuilt scroll depth auto event in Google Tag Manager with percentages set at around 25, 50, 75, and 100. So whenever you get to one of those depths, this event fires. What we want to do is enhance this tracking code. So hit the edit button, scroll down, and enable override settings in this tag. And we're gonna to go to more settings, custom metrics, and we're gonna add a custom metric. In here, you type in the ID or the index of the custom metric you've set up for scroll depth in Google Analytics. And in here, you put the dis distance between your scroll depth intervals. So in my case, it's 25, 50, 75, so the gap would be 25. For this to work, you need to have a consistent gap, otherwise this will all go wrong. If you had set your tag up to have uh, to fire at 10, 20, 30, 40%, then you would obviously enter 10 into this. Save that and you are ready to go. That's the GTM side of things. The next step is to modify your settings in Google Analytics. Come into your property, custom definitions, custom metrics, and you're gonna create a new custom metric called scroll depth. Remember, this is the index which we put into GTM, so if you already have custom metrics in place, make sure you change your GTM setup and put in the correct index. Finally, you need to go into your view settings to create a calculated metric, and you're gonna create the calculated metric called average scroll depth with these settings. We're dividing scroll depth, which is the combination of all the incremental values we're collecting from the page of how far down someone scrolled, divided by the number of page views, and we divide it by 100 to make it into a percentage so it looks nice within the interface. Finally, create a custom report in Google Analytics called Scroll Tracking with these settings.
Once done, hit save and you'll see your nice new report, which is very easy to analyze and you can quickly see average scroll depth per page without having to do any complicated maths. The other benefit is you can quickly share this with other people in your organization, either via a PDF or you can share an exact link to this custom report so they can import it into their own view for themselves. Even though this method solves the complicated reporting issues of standard tracking, we still have the low data fidelity and multiple event issues to deal with. There's also a problem if someone is already partway scrolled down the page and then refreshes it. The previous higher up scroll events won't fire and this can cause data inaccuracy. Tracking method two is very similar to tracking method one. We still have the page scrolled event, but you'll notice two differences here. Number one is that the metric value is no longer a hard coded static value. Instead, we're pulling that data from the data layer. Our custom JavaScript we've written is pushing the actual value someone scrolled down to, so 16%, 25%, 23%, rather than the cutoffs which you would have had before of 25, 50, 75, and 100. The second difference is that the triggering is now done on an event which is pushed to the data layer rather than the auto events which we had in GTM. Both of these things allow us for much accurate scroll tracking. In order to do this, we obviously have to have a JavaScript script running in the background. And this is the third tag we have here. You can see, um, I'm not going to go through the full script, but essentially what it is doing is whenever someone hides the page or moves away from the page, uh, in the background it is calculated how far down someone has scrolled. And then when someone hides the page, it sends this page scrolled event to the data layer and it tracks their scroll increment. So not only do we have how far down in absolute terms they are down the page, but how far the increment is since we last sent a scroll tracking event. So if someone got to 26% and then they changed tabs, we would send an event and it would have the scroll increment value of 26. If they then scrolled a bit further down the page, so they went to say 36%, when they change tab again or moved away from the page, another page scrolled event would fire, but the increment value would be set to 10, whereas the scroll depth event would be the full value of 36. And it's those incremental values which are being populated into the custom metric so that we get a really much better accurate idea of how far down someone scrolled on the page versus the simple script which we had before which was only cutting up people off at 25 50 75 and 100 percent so this tracking is a lot more accurate i'll put a link to the full code and this whole container so you can download it uh, in the description here's a demo so we've got the script set up on this page and i've scrolled about 16 percent of the way down i then transition away from the page by navigating to the home page and you can see the scroll tracking event fires and we're capturing that scroll depth increment of 16% not only within the event label but also in the custom metric one which is what we use to calculate average scroll depth within GA. This second method of tracking solves all the issues. We get better data fidelity, we send less events and you can easily still see the average scroll depth metric within the Google Analytics interface. A bit of an aside, technically my script triggers the event when the page is hidden, either by someone navigating away or switching browser tabs. This could, in theory, increase the number of events sent to Google Analytics if someone is regularly switching between tabs. To minimize this, I've ensured the script only fires if the scroll depth increment is 5%. If someone keeps switching tabs but isn't scrolling on our page, no events will fire. So there you go, two ways to enhance your existing scroll tracking so that you can spend less time manipulating the data and more time on the analysis and activation of the data. As I mentioned, the script in this video is available for download. Check the description of this video for more details.